Hello, I'm Skip Crooker. In this video, I'm going to share a file I've created to forecast inflation. In particular, we're going to take a look at forecasting inflation from November 2021 through October 2022. So today is November 17th, 2021. And all the code that I'm going to use is freely available and downloadable, and certainly you can pull down the data yourself and uh, I'm going to supply the code that would allow you to replicate this. So first, uh, this is our studio. And uh, if you're going to replicate this, you would need to install these packages, quant mod and the forecast package. And then you can load the, the CPI data. This is CPI data for all consumers in the United States. <laughs> and uh, that uh, is downloadable using the quant mod library. And then with the quant mod library uh, installed and in memory, you can use the get symbols function to pull down that data from the Federal Reserve. And so that's what these uh, uh, four lines will do. This line actually uh, is going to calculate the um, year over year proportional change in the CPI. So this is what's commonly reported as the inflation rate using the consumer price index. Actually, I'd go ahead and calculate a lag of the consumer price index as well, uh, lag of the different consumer price index as well. So don't actually use this in this analysis. Uh, some summary statistics for our CPI. And then you can see and that this data goes back to January 1, 1947. Most recent uh, time point comes from October 1, 2021. And in that time, the 50% uh, of the time, the year-over-year -year infl inflation rate reported each month is uh, below 2.79%. 50% of the time, it's higher than that. You can see uh, arithmetic average, uh, change in the consumer price index year over year is about 3.365. The largest uh, was a 13.621% year over year uh, change in the inflation rate. And the biggest decline was actually a 3% annual fall in the consumer price index. Okay, so some summary statistics were missing 12 because again, I did this year over year difference. So I actually use, lose that those first 12 months. Uh, plotting the change in consumer price index from that 1947 uh, through uh, early uh, October, uh, we can see certainly through the 1970s up through it looks like exactly January 1, 1980, right? Uh, kind of an upward trend in uh, the proportional change in CPI, so growing inflation. And then after 1980, right, we see kind of a downward trend, at least to this spike up. Of course, we've had other spike ups in the CPI uh, over, over time, and certainly over this period in which the trend had been going down. So I'm going to show you a real easy way to model inflation and uh, rely on Maybe think of it as machine learning or statistical learning uh, techniques. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just demonstrate how this technique would have performed had we done this for the November 2018 to October 2019 uh, time period. So we're going to only use data in our modeling that was available before November 1, 2018. So of course that last time period it would use would be October 2018. And so the function that does this, this is in the forecast package, forecast uh, package created by some very good time series uh, econometricians, time series statisticians. And so we're going to use this auto ARIMA function. So it's going to look at the data in this uh, single variable time series and do some statistical tests to find the optimal model for this uh, consumer, for this difference, consumer price index data. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm just going to go ahead and, and fit that model and save it to an object I've called inflation underscore model 19, because certainly taking us into the 2019 calendar year. 
and then um, print the model results. And we can see this is uh, the best model this is an ARIMA, three autoregressive terms, integrated and no moving average components. And uh, now plotting. And so I've got some functions here to go ahead and, and forecast that November 2018 to October 2019 time period using only data before November 1, 2018. And so now this black line is the actual path of inflation over that time period. And our model's forecast is this blue line. So you can see our model was anticipating fairly constant inflation uh, between 2 and 3 percent year over year. In fact, um, closer to 3 percent, so maybe something like 2.6 or 2.7 percent inflation. Now this red curve is the lower bound, our model's lower bound on inflation. The green curve is the upper bound. Now, um, we uh, these bounds are 80% uh, confident bounds. So statistically, based on the prior data, we would anticipate the actual path of inflation is, uh, is between the red and green curve 80% of the time, um, or 80% confidence. And uh, that uh, entire time path is within those bounds in this time period. And um, you can see, you know, maybe um, maybe not too far away from our forecast, but certainly consistently, actual inflation was below our forecast over this 2018, November 2018 to October 2019 time period. Okay, so um, that's a particular uh, uh, piece of information we can use in evaluating how useful this model may be to us in, in making decisions. Of course, uh, we can also take a look at how well this model done, performed in the November 2019 to October 2020 time period as well. And so code looks really similar here. Uh, and now notice I'm using all the data up to that October 1, 2019, right? So I've got less than this 2019 November 1st. So that would include up to October 1, 2019. And we notice that when we apply this uh, machine learning uh, auto ARIMA function, we actually find the same process. Uh, so maybe, you know, one more year of data it is going all the way back to 1947. So maybe not surprised that the structure of the model is unchanged, maybe kind of robust to that data that we observed uh, over 2018 into 2019. Uh, we go ahead and plot it. <clears throat> and uh, of course, we know in this time period, something very unusual uh, happened and of course that was the outbreak of the COVID pandemic and so certainly kind of that February March time period lots of things uh, started to shut down and so it is interesting exactly over that time period we see the actual path of inflation actually went from above our forecast uh, to certainly cutting below our forecast interestingly when we made the forecast in that November 2019 time period or we're acting as if you were using all the information certainly that was available November 2019. We see inflation was forecasted to be below 2%, maybe 1.8 or 1.9% throughout the year. Inflation started out above that rate. Uh, and then as we said that with the COVID pandemic uh, breaking out, uh, certainly kept below our forecast. And then maybe by late summer 2020 actually started to move uh, back um, much more closer to uh, the model anticipation formed in um, November of 2019. So interesting there. Again, we've got confidence bounds, 80% confidence bounds, and certainly we can see that our path of inflation was always within those confidence bounds from November 2019 to October 2020. Okay, and so you might imagine what, what we'll do next, right? We'll go ahead and take the and we can also look at another November to October 12-month uh, time period, right, going November 2020 through October 2021. Again, I'm going to get all the data that was available for our CPI uh, before November 1, 2020. And so, of course, that would be through October uh, 2020. And uh, it's interesting. And also uh, point out that, you know, that does include data now from the COVID period, it's interesting that the structure of our model does change, right? It changed in the prior years 
right? We were uh, fitting an ARIMA 3, comma 1, comma 0, and now uh, find the data unusual enough uh, to, to actually get a different model. And so we have an ARIMA 2, 1, 1, so two autoaggressive returns. The data is integrated, and we have a moving average component. <laughs> and plotting the data, we do see that um, we, we have the path of inflation track uh, substantially beyond what our model was expecting, right, using data going all the way back to 1947. So even though the, co the pandemic broke out uh, 2020, right, the forecasted path of inflation was always within our model bounds in that time period. And, uh, you know, maybe not to, for much of the time period, maybe not to far from the forecast path. Uh, but that seems to change here in this November 2020 to October 2021 time period, right? And in fact, we see almost exactly on March 1, 2021, the path of inflation uh, skips above our 80% uh, bound, right? We would be 80% sure that the true path of inflation would be below this maybe two and a quarter percent inflation impact. In fact, it goes uh, much higher than this. And we see hit 6% inflation year over year basis by November of 2021, right? And so certainly a lot of time where inflation rate is significantly above our model anticipation. Okay, so certainly we, we have that in mind in terms of how this uh, modeling strategy may work in, uh, uh, based on these prior time periods. So, so maybe three of the years, or two of the years, uh, the data seems to be fairly well behaved uh, within our model, but something unusual seems to be uh, disturbing the pace of inflation, and very unusual even uh, considering all the, our economic experiences since 1947. So uh, something peculiar, uh, you know, about this February, March, April uh, time period in 2021, uh, uh, causing this um, rapid change in uh, inflation. Uh, nonetheless, if we can go ahead, and of course we won't be able to uh, see how our projections do for another year from now, but certainly we can get all the data up through October 1, 2021 and fit another model. Uh, interesting, uh, we do hold on to that moving average component and we do go ahead and add back an autoregressive component in our model. So now we've got a REMA 3, 1, 1, and uh, then this would be the anticipated uh, performance of inflation over the next year. So this is um, approximately today, November 2021, uh, expecting inflation, uh, average inflation to be um, somewhere between six and 7%, maybe closer to six and a half percent would be our uh, projection for November uh, 2021. So that data point should come out here in another couple of weeks. Uh, and then see inflation rising according to our model throughout the year, uh, getting closer to that 7% on a year-over-year -year basis. So again, we would, uh, this model's anticipating a 50% chance that by the time we hit October 2022, uh, certainly uh, it, it looks like about 50% chance inflation would be 6.9%. Uh, if we take a look at our lower and upper bound, right, we can see that 80% um, sure that um, the inflation rate on a year-over-year -year basis will be above 4% even one year from today. And you can see uh, over much of that year, uh, certainly through March at least, we anticipate inflation being at least 5% on a year-over-year -year basis. So anticipating inflation above 5% through about March and uh, then, uh, then perhaps tracking below 5% from March through uh, September or, or October, but certainly above 4% that entire range. And then of course we see um, potential to uh, upside risk that uh, we actually could uh, threaten 9% inflation on a year over year basis. And um, even maybe if things uh, are uh, too uh, adverse, uh, maybe approach double digit inflation by uh, October. Of course, we saw, you know, in, in past time periods, you know, uh, you know, not 
necessarily being attracted to that upper bound or any reason to think that you necessarily have to go there, we, right? We see that in the 2018, 2019 time period, uh, some potential for inflation to go above 5%, but that didn't occur. Inflation very stable over that uh, time period and actually below model expectation. 2019-20, uh, again, uh, not attracted to that upper bound, maybe early part of uh, late part 2019, early 2020, maybe closer to that upper bound, but <coughs> certainly over the last, uh, rest of the year, uh, moderated. Of course, we had that pandemic break out. Uh, and now this was the unusual time period. So maybe this uh, November 2020 to October 2021 is what's really gotten us thinking about a potential to hit to, to clip that inflation projection on uh, from the top or go above that uh, upper bound. And so um, that's certainly, you know, that, that was the trajectory there, right? Heading in uh, to uh, this time period. So through October, 2021, and now um, kind of picking that back up, we do anticipate the model has inflation leveling off, but uh, certainly, um, uh, that will be something that we'll be paying attention to over the next uh, several months. Thanks for listening.